as we, uh, as we head toward the finish of the session, one thing's come up. I think people didn't know the internet password, and uh, if you want to engage with the various uh, social media and online conversations that are happening, the internet password is Datapalooza. If you hadn't already guessed that, you're in the wrong room, I think. Uh, let me now welcome for another uh, set of special announcements, Deputy Secretary Bill Corr from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Welcome. Thank you, Matt. Good morning. Like Matt, I have had the opportunity to be at each of these three Health Data Initiative forums. And I can tell you that in the two years we've been doing this, we have come a very, very long way. We came together for the first time to see what creative tools might come out of a handful of HHS data sets. At the first meeting, we got a glimpse of what was possible, but we knew that we wanted to do so much more. We also knew that if we had a group of partners on this journey, partners like you, that we could go even further. So I want to, at the beginning here, thank the Institute of Medicine, Harvey Feinberg, Judy Salerno, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, John Lumpkin, for all the great work that they have done, and so many of our other partners for believing in and supporting the Health Data Initiative and the journey that we are all on together. In today's knowledge economy, the tools of measurement and accountability are paramount. In healthcare, providers and patients, payers and public officials have just begun to put those tools to use. We've seen real progress, though, towards higher quality, improved outcomes, better value, and lower costs. But it's also clear that we have only scratched the surface, especially when it comes to giving the public access to a wide range of information that it needs to fully appreciate our public health challenges, to hold our government officials and leaders accountable for improving health and health care, and for demanding change. Right here, we've seen what's possible, and so have customers, excuse me, so have consumers whose expectations have begun to change. They are seeing that it is possible to obtain their own health information. It is possible to learn about health trends in their cities and their neighborhoods. It's possible to use that information to make better choices. Last year, Secretary Sebelius announced our plans to make our department's data more available and to show people how that data might be used to improve health and health care. And so today, in the few minutes I have before you all break for lunch, and I'm very much aware that it is time for lunch, I'd like to highlight some of the additional steps that our department is taking. First, across the Department of Health and Human Services, our senior leadership is now meeting twice a year to review all existing and new data holdings to identify what new data can be released for public use. This month, we've created a new cross-departmental committee, the Data Access and Use Committee, that will, for the first time, promote new ways that we can use our data internally to better accomplish our mission. This is a commitment that we will follow, constantly reviewing all new data sets to make available everything that we can. One of our newest open data activities is from our Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS. We have created a new organizational unit within CMS known as the Office of Information Products and Data Analysis, headed by Niall Brennan. Its mission is to help streamline access to and promote safe and secure use of CMS data. We're determined to make as much CMS data as we can available to the public for your use. With this new office, we're also opening a trove of new data resources from our Medicare and Medicaid programs, including data about healthcare provider quality and utilization. For example, He's a believer. <laughs> Bob Kosher, I, I know him. Uh, for example, we're releasing administrative claims data like the four-year Medicare trend data. This is the kind of important information and data that helps researchers, analysts, health plans, and consumers understand how Medicare expenditures vary over time. These data and the applications using them will be featured in some of the afternoon sessions. I'm pleased to announce that we are also launching our new data catalog today. 
The new healthdata.gov will provide an enhanced user experience for technology developers with nearly double the number of data set offerings from last year. Built with modern IT capabilities, healthdata.gov will provide all of our HHS program managers with a useful and a user-friendly way to post new data holdings and to maintain existing ones to feature the latest data. Over the next few days, you will be hearing much more about this. At the same time, we're taking another important step to unleash additional information through healthcare.gov, our consumer-facing website that we launched in 2010 under the new healthcare law, the Affordable Care Act. The website's most exciting feature is the insurance finder, which asks visitors a few simple questions and then produces a customized menu of insurance choices, drawing from a huge inventory of offerings, including over a thousand health insurance companies, as well as Medicaid and CHIP. Until now, that kind of information had not been available to consumers, but thanks to the new health care law, it is just a few clicks away. But healthcare.gov is more than about giving consumers better tools. It's about using technology to create transparency for consumers. We're also making our health insurance marketplace more competitive as we do so. When consumers can easily compare plans, insurance companies will no longer be able to hide behind fine print. If they want to compete, they'll have to provide better coverage or a better price or both. And today we're adding an automation feature, you know well, an API, which will enable other sites to have the most up-to-date and reliable information about these insurance plans on healthcare.gov. By automating this feature, we're opening the door for many new consumer-oriented applications and services to emerge. Next, I want to announce an exciting new step that we're taking to develop the digital workforce in health and healthcare, starting with our own federal workforce. We're collaborating with the West Wireless Foundation to sponsor new Health Data Innovation Fellows who will join HHS to work on a variety of data projects. This initiative's first fellow will focus on promoting novel uses of health data to improve consumer engagement in healthcare. I want to thank Dr. Mohit Kaushal of the Foundation for his vision and his commitment to building a, re a rich health data ecosystem. Finally, it's my pleasure to announce an extension of the Health Data Consortium's activities to local communities that wish to sponsor their own Palooza's health codathons and health data innovation activities. Here on the screen, hopefully, you will see the first group of health data affiliates who will promote data use in their local communities to improve health and health care. Congratulations to these five communities and their leaders who have joined us here today. I'm sure we'll be seeing additional affiliates joining us soon. In just a few years, we have seen great progress, thanks in large part to the ideas and hard work of many people who are here today. But, just, but as we are just getting started, this administration is a key participant in the health data community. At HHS, we will continue publishing new HHS data for public access, making existing data much more accessible, and working as part of a constantly growing ecosystem to educate innovators about the data. As we have said before, and as the Secretary will say to you tomorrow when she has the opportunity to speak with you, the success and usefulness of our open data and open government initiatives will be determined by our work together and by your creativity and innovative prowess. By any account, I think we can say we have made a great beginning and we are already making an important difference. But I want to tell you that I cannot wait to see what tomorrow will bring because it is breathtaking to see how far we've come in two years. But with the kind of innovative talent we have in this room, the sky is the limit. So best wishes to you for a very productive two days Thank you for being here and thank you for working so hard on this health data initiative. We are going to improve health and health care in America for all of its citizens because of the work that you do. 
Thank you and best wishes for a very productive two days.